Uh, welcome back. We are uh, well. We're going to look in on another game. This is Undead against Necromantic. Um, the Jin Gangoolies against the Monster Mash. Um, and yeah, this one was earlier in the week. So this is still week one, uh, or the first round, first round of matches uh, of season four. Uh, and this one was played earlier in the week. So I mentioned it after the video of uh, my uh, the Underworld Lizardbane game earlier in the week. And what do we have? So Undead are defending. Uh, this is a, so a new team to the league, but we do we um, allow new teams joining after a season to, to play five games against the AI to start developing the team. And as you can see, we've got two guard mummies. So both of those have leveled. Two mighty blow whites, so they've both leveled. Uh, there are two leveled ghouls as well, um, both with block and shore hands. Um, no levels on zombies, which um, is good. Uh, there's an unlevel ghoul on the bench here as well, so a third one. Uh, no skeletons. Um, having no skeletons and just just going zombies on linemen is um, is quite a popular thing. Uh, people prefer the extra toughness. Um, I like a skeleton or two, just because that extra point of movement gives you a bit more range uh, if, if you just need to move and assist somewhere. Um, but you know, lo lots of people go with um, with just zombies as linemen, uh, and it's perfectly reasonable to do that. Uh, oh, um, that's that's that team, yeah. So they're set up very narrow, inviting the Necromantic to attack the wings. Um, and Necromantic have so the two werewolves, both have leveled twice. We've got dodge and block here, block and tackle on this one. Two unleveled ghouls back here, they're both quite new to the team. I think this might be that one's first game. We have a perfect defence, so the undead can set up again. Carry on looking at the um, necromantic while I do that. Oh, they declines the uh, the reset up, um, just leaving those three zombies on the line. Um, yeah, well, why not? I suppose they're going to get hit. They're going to get two dice wherever they put those three zombies on the line. Um, could maybe if yeah, could maybe you consider using the perfect defence to defend the wings. Now you know that people on the halfway line are not just going to be blocked. Could have um, you know, perhaps a mummy and a white on each wing here to, to make that really solid. Um, step some more zo a line of uh, extra zombies here, but you know if you if you decide that's how you want to set up anyway, and you can't change much of the line of scrimmage, you know, why not? Um, so we've done walls, we've done ghouls. Two whites, uh, one has tackle, other one has not le yet leveled, um, just on two points. A couple of block zombies. Uh, and a guard zombie in the middle, two flash golems as well. One is unleveled on five points, uh, and this one has mighty blow, and he's three points of another level. Uh, and the necromantic are attacking, um, so straight in with some two dice blocks and a zombie down straight away. So all three of those zombies are splattered. Can maybe be looking at uh, a blitz. We've got the mighty blow flesh golem here. It's, it's sort of good value for a blitz. Uh, and he's going for that zombie on the corner there. Just to use a reroll to avoid that turnover. Uh, and grabs an injury. So now one point off a level. Um, one pass will do it. Casualty is far more likely. Uh, and that regeneration failed. Uh, oh, there are inducements here as well, aren't there? It's like they've taken. Oh, that's fame. Do I, that, I think that might be extra reroll worth of inducements. I think they only have three on the roster. Um, I can't see what else it would have been. It must be must be an extra training reroll. So a ghoul retrieving the ball. Uh, used the reroll already, but didn't need it that time. Yeah, just defending the ball there, so not really any way through. Um, undead are all very compact here, which is a downside to, to being strong in the centre. You could end up getting surrounded a bit. But the, the upside and the reason why uh, uh, several good players will hold firm in the centre, um, if you can get the attacking team to go down one flank and then squeeze them against the touchline. It's a really effective defensive strategy. 
you just have to make sure you don't get surrounded first and trapped in and they're using this turn to spread out um, defends more of the width of the pitch which is really good Just get a stun on that flesh column. Uh, had to reroll as well, so I had to double skulls. Uh, and back to the necromantic. Straight in the flesh column there. of the whites to knock over a couple more zombies uh, and that block zombie taking down a mummy um, not seen a blitz yet uh, oh, I'm gonna see it here so this is one uh, this is two dice two dice into one um, but gets to knock down the first the first uh, block and sets up two dice on that other one as well oh the ghoul sorry <clears throat> And in this way, and that guard's just holding, holding there. And they are spreading out a bit, spreading out the mummies to put more guard down. Um, keeping the mummies, especially two guard mummies, right next to each other makes it really hard to get out either of them and, uh, let's take a skull there and it, a knockout for it blitzing on one dice just wondering if we could have got two dice anywhere i think most of the team had already acted uh, by that point yeah we'd have to have uh, maybe put this ghoul over here to get that to get two dice there um, which may have been worthwhile there's another knockout as well so quite quickly uh, losing players are three three removals I think so far if, uh, in Necromantic's favour they haven't lost any players back yet so down to eight the undead uh, set up for B2 dice into two um, but knock down first block again push it away Guard here, so I can have a go at this mummy. Looks like all moving over there. And that's two dice. I think it's a one because of guard on the mummy, uh, but it's, it's safe. Just push back, so. And that's, that's like two dice on the mummy. So I've had the choice there between getting that second block dice or I think I might have screened over here because this ghoul can, can get on the ball here. Uh, I mean, the wolf has tackle, um, which is a definite upside for the necromantic, but it's he's a three plus dodge out, uh, two, three, four, five, yeah. And then one dice on the ball um, with a block player and the ball carrier doesn't have block. Tackle does make the three plus uh, not re-rollable without using a team re-roll um, but I th yeah I think I'd have had the uh, that last zombie over there to, to, to try and screen that play off because then the ghoul's got much further round to go uh, using their blitz there though I'm not sure where that blitz was uh, but that's a failed failed uh, dodge on a double one I can't really tell what the intention was there I imagine maybe blitzing the wolf um, so that this ghoul could then come and uh, sort of screen over here. Um, I don't know, a safer way of doing that because this zombie was free. Could maybe have stuck this zombie in there, blitz with this ghoul to at least get a pushback, and then your ghoul's free to move. And then you still got this other one who can move over this way as well. But I don't, I don't know uh, what the blitz target was there. Um, but. Foul dodge very unlucky, that's one in nine that that will come up. Um, as I think we mentioned when a skink failed a dodge in the last video. Um, yeah, 
Flesh Golems definitely owning the pitch better than the mummies have so far. They're holding the centre here. Obviously, one mummy's been knocked out. Down to that white, which sets up two dice into two on that on that white. Uh, although not quite, it's two dice into one. So yeah, if the ghoul had been basically not on a corner, if the ghoul had been either there or there, second uh, second block would have been two dice as well. As long as you push back to the right place, you still have the assist. But got away with that by getting the knockdown on the first first block. And this ghoul is pretty well screened off. This. Um, this goal here for the, for the uh, undead is still a threat. Same threat as last turn. Um, but now that zombie can get over there or set up. Get two dice into two. So he's in the second block this time. Yep. And placing that zombie there as well meant uh, even if that had gone wrong or hadn't been a knockdown. Um, having only these two squares in between here is, is much difficult, more difficult to touch through. So I could have put the zombie one back and still got the same benefits assist size. Oh, that's a top play by that white. And just to push, push it away. Maybe if pushed straight there. Yeah, so it was four plus, four plus dodge, three plus dodge. And a go for it, I think to get that one dice and then just try to throw a zombie through um, to uh, to shut things down um, but yeah so here the necromantic have got quite an easy way out of, uh, of just blitzing this um, white away uh, using the werewolf to do it, he has frenzy as well so because he's within two squares of the edge can just be shoved off the pitch pushing back the ghoul there Instead, um, would have meant it's harder to surf the, the white you'd have needed to commit another player. So if you imagine the ghoul was there and that was the pushback, um, the werewolf has to push to there and you'd have to commit another player to be standing. Now, where are we now? Yeah, you'd have to put another player there. So it'd use up another player's action if they're going to get the surf. Probably this zombie would be the one. So we thought oh, that'd be a go for it. So probably the, the ghoul. And then you're pushing the white from there to there because you can't push him there if that if your ball carrier is there. And then he has to push off the pitch because this square is not available on the diagonal. Um, it's which is quite a small thing because this white's pretty much getting surfed anyway. Um, but it means I have to use another player to make it happen, and it took the knockdown first time anyway. Um, and I think we'll just see touchdown this turn, unless there's a turnover first. Um, no, that's running. <clears throat> I think that's the one that was on two points before, so now one point off of a level. No knockouts coming back. That's a white and a mummy, so big, both big losses. Um, and the undead are down. I think they're down to. I think it's still eleven players, aren't they? So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hang on, I miscounted this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're down to ten players. I thought they had thirteen on their roster, maybe. Necromantic still at eleven. They're setting up pretty wide here. Well, certainly wider than the undead are, um, but we're still with that bit of space down the flanks. So, that's three block zombies on, oh, no, sorry, two block zombies and a guard zombie on the line. They'll all get hit with two dice blocks. And probably starting with the uh, the white with Mighty Blow. Might have been worth setting up the um, the white to hit the guard player. Um, perhaps swap those two. Then you can do that one first, and on if you're stuck with the both down, you're still going to take him down. Um, 
starting with the mummy on the guard. So that pushes the guard off the line. And then these are easy two dice, two dices. Um, the white is a safer block. So maybe be first. And it's the one you're going to get the best value out of as well with, with Mighty Blow. Although you can use it for a blitz now. I think they might be looking at this down here and then hitting this white. Um, yeah, couldn't get at the flesh golem for for two dice. Just push on that one. So now the high kick catch and now the pickup as well on the yeah. And again, that's a one in nine that that would fail with the reroll. Um. Ooh, set up very, very deep defensive setup they had there. And that is injuries, casualty for that wolf. Uh, oh, broken zombie uh, regenerated, um, but that was that was another s spot where um, it was set up to be two dice into one. So if it's just to push back first time, there's a bit of one dice block with the second one. Um, it's something to watch out for with, with uh, frenzy players. Yeah, it was the two point. Uh, Ghoul that scored to go up to five. Uh, I can two dice on there. Oh no, can there? Uh, might have two dice on the zombie, uh, the mummy afterwards. I don't think they do. No, it's just it'd be two two red dice. And then watching that zombie there. Um, the werewolf this far at the pitch and two more turns. The necromantic could definitely pressure to to look like they're going to score another one. Um, well, it's definitely a possibility. Guard player down. So into turn seven, so this is the turn where both coaches have to consider um, scoring threats if they're going to score this turn. They need someone in range to do it. So if this wolf isn't doing anything else, I think I'd be straight away getting it within uh, eight squares of the end zone just to make sure there's someone there. Could well be uh, using the blitz with that wolf, uh, or making the blitz. But also one new up. Um, could well just be content with uh, with being up at half time, uh, making sure the undead don't score. So this wolf being back here might also be sensible. Uh, yeah, he's going for the the blitz. Uh, would have been a two dice into one again, but does keep getting the uh, first. First uh, block, and that is an injury. So, Ghoul is missing the next game. And another casualty for the Wolves, and the Wolf is in scoring range as well. So, has options. Um, Undead don't look like they've got anyone who's going to be able to reach uh, at this point. Um, a bit too far back for how quickly they needed to score with the short drive. So, this looks most likely to still be 1 0 at half time. Um, Move the ball forwards there, uh, but failed that go for it. 
not really sure where the gourd's going, uh, so we can just keep it keep it safe in there. So this uh, ooh, double skulls. That's the last reroll done. Um, could do white hand off to the, the werewolf for a touchdown. So three plus three plus to score at this point. And makes that catch. That is 2 0 at half time. Right, so I knew I know a couple of things about this game um, before. Actually. Obviously, I know the final score because you have to see it before you come in. Um, but I was surprised that was 2 0 at half time. Um, given that I know the final score. And that is half time, or have Undead got one more turn? Still no knockouts back, um, but they'll get they'll get the half time uh, to get that back as well. And the walls are both never in nicely. That one's just a uh, yeah one point off another level. I think they've both they both had a casualty and then one one touchdown between them so far just in this game. Yeah, they're getting a lot of the star player points. <clears throat> oh, there is uh, an injury system block zombie, uh, badly hurt, uh, no regeneration, so it is out for the game. Uh, casualty for that, first casualty for that zombie. Um, could be having perhaps a ghoul blitz here, probably be the safest. Um, don't see if I can get enough assists. I could get in two assists on a, on a flush golem to do that if the, this white was marked. Um, again, just to push back. The block, the block dice not being very good for them. Uh, and that is half time. Did better manage to pick up an injury in, the, in that last turn. And the mummy's back. Okay. But that white still sleeping off his uh, knock to the head, which I think was self-inflicted. And under two attacks, so to get back in the game, they need to probably score quite quickly, and then uh, and then defend aggressively, uh, make sure they can take the ball off of the necromantic uh, and give themselves a, a chance to score another one. For, for getting back in the game. Um, they're quite narrow. So they've got ghouls up the pitch, or one ghoul up the pitch. Uh, one is one is out injured, so they've got one sure hands block uh, and one on level ghoul. Uh, just one white, one white left on. Uh, kick zombie going deep. Um, and that's a good kick. That makes so uh, makes the uh, the undead go back before they can come forwards. Um, and Necromantic being two 0 up, um, and no sort of no catcher, so they're going to have to run. The ghoul's going to have to go back, get the ball, and then run it pretty much all the way. They've, they've not got much um, throwing game, and that sort of makes the most likely score at this point being two one. Um, sort of if you're expecting the attacking team to score a touchdown when they've got the ball. Um, yeah, two, two runs kind of most likely um, with that sort of deep kick and no one to throw the ball up to, which isn't really und the undead game anyway. Uh, ball safely in hands uh, and I've started going up. So it could count how quickly they can score by just running this guy. Uh, two, four, six, seven. So next turn could be at the halfway line, and it's two turns from there really. So we're looking at uh, turn twelve score at the earliest probably, and then you're giving Necromantic five turns to defend a one touchdown lead if you can score that quickly, 
add a pass into that, um, you could do it one turn quicker. But you also need a lot of things to go right as well. So, solid line here, um, no getting at the ball, ball's safe. Um, throwing a blitz in at the end. It's 15 point mighty blow flesh golem, it's worth trying to get hit in every turn. And it's probably the right right choice of a blitzer. Uh, and they can now just stand off here. Uh, make it very difficult for the undead to get through. Don't want to leave this flank too undefended. And didn't move everyone over anyway. So the two wolves being deep here. Um, this coach plays that way quite a lot. Uh, but it means they've always got a response if there's a break through the line. It means their line can be outnumbered and overwhelmed. Um, if, if they sort of pick a spot, get their guards strategically placed uh, and make a hole. But they've always got the walls to respond. Um, which makes them very difficult to attack. Kind of going all in here. Flesh Golem's got stand firm, so you're not gonna you're not gonna push it back. But the white could be. So they're looking at this as the hole they're attacking uh, and kind of going all in on it um, and without the pace to, to switch flanks. Um, Necromantic can now pile more bodies this way uh, and because they're so bunched up, um, overlap a bit here as well uh, and just squeeze that way to, to push the attack against the touchline there. Um, yep, Flesh Golem found two dice and that puts a mark on the ball as well. Plus the removal. So Ghoul will have to be dodging away next turn because moving this flesh golem is unlikely. Two knockouts. So second team are already down to ten players. Now it's eight. Um, and they have to uh, somehow try and find another touchdown. Or to try and get back into the game. And yeah, I can kind of see... Uh, I had the same when I played this Necromantic team last season. And I was attacking them. Uh, actually, we, we didn't switch ends at half time, so let's switch ends part way through the half, through the drive. Um, but, but yeah, you can kind of see it this way as well. If you imagine you're the attacking team, you're already bunched up and you're surrounded. It's exactly what I did against them uh, last season. Uh, oh, it's a broken white. Uh, regenerated. Um, but a casualty for a mummy, which is nice. Um, but yeah, but I, I played the Necromantic team, I think. I think it ended in a tie, uh, this is the regular season game, um, but I found it very difficult attacking them because I I was too compact, it was, it was a bit like this really, I was too compact, I think it was more central, um, and I just couldn't find my way out. Um, oh, that's a shame. Uh, one, in, one in 81 block, block dice rolling. Um, Sort of uh, ones and twos all round. So yeah, it's sort of double two both times. Be the D6 equivalent. Um, but they are sort of leaning into that attack. They're doubling down on on their attack route. Um, I might get away with it. The line is uh, starting to look a bit thinner. That they getting that white off the pitch. Last turn has left them a bit. Short-handed there, the Necromantic. Uh, I think they've used a reroll already, so that's guard player down. Got possible, possible mummy blitz on the wolf here to open up. Um, another knockout is useful. So even up, even up the numbers a bit more. I think it's nine plays eight at the moment. We could have a count up. Just spotting here. I'd like to use my. Um, 
my blitz. Uh, wondering how it looks like this mummy is doing it. Probably on the wolf here. Um, yeah, I was wondering if there was a way. Well, it'd been one dice to blitz this uh, this white in here, and then you're looking for another assist to try and get him shoved off the pitch. It's probably too uh, too risky. Yeah, I think blitzing this this werewolf is uh, probably the right move here. Shame it's only a pushback. Ball carrier block. Um, I'll show him off. You've now got one dice to surf this goal. We'll take that on. Two dice there is, is safer and a good move. Yeah, one dice to surf the goal is worth worth taking and he does get it. I think dodging the goal out, but you need to get in there is the right way, I think. So the, the flesh gun can follow up to mark the ball carrier, but you've always got three plus dodge to, to come out. Knocked out zombie, so both both teams have been losing a lot of players. I should have a bit of a count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the necromantic. Um, no, eight, eight for the Necromantic, I think I missed that prone zombie. So that ghoul's in, pro in trouble. Uh, that's a failed dodge. Failed dodge which could give him a bit of space. Um, undead are on. So it's eight, eight Necromantic, undead. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven plays eight. Still finding some two dice hits. That's the mummy on the flesh column. We've got two dice there as well now. I had that anyway because of guard. So a zombie can get through here, but has this deep wolf to watch out for. Uh, and he's hitting, hitting that zombie as well. That even up at seven players each. Um, and yeah, taking that block on there. I might have used the zombie because of stat, but, but only because of stand firm. Just because then, if you get that knockdown, goes free to try and move away. Is uh, is blitz ball off the pitch there? And in bite water, just blitz the ball carrier. Though. Probably a better move. Uh, zombie off over there. Undead one comes out on top. We've got one dice on the ball here if they want to just blitz with the flesh column. Uh, a note has gone for two dice on the, the one at on the touch line. And that's the knockout, so it'll be safe. I'll be fine later, I can come back. Another failed dodge, so that's two one in nines failed for the uh necromantic now as well. Both coaches have had that to deal with. Uh, we like to, I think I think strategically they probably need to be blitzing this wolf but if this mummy had pushed diagonally there you got this zombie can just come shove this white off the pitch um, if the white was there you've got the assist built in with the mummy you just go two dice off the pitch but then you are probably struggling to screen against this wolf or deal with it um, two dice there yeah, you'd, you'd be struggling to uh, protect the ball at that point. So probably uh, more sensible to be making that your blitz. Mummy can go and guard that one. Yeah, that's the blitz there for the knockdown. Uh, no armor break, but can now go mark this wolf. No, nope, no one's marking that wolf. With that dodge there. So it's uphill, uphill dice to go in there. Two, two uphill into two uphill. Uh, in fact, one dice, one dice into two uphill because you can't do anything about that mummy's assist on the second one if that's going to be the blitz. He's going to go for that. 
but he spared the uh, the two two red dice blitz uh, block. That why it's still in surf danger. I think we've got that first because it frees this mummy up to uh, oh go for the handoff uh, on the white okay so white has a two plus to score and they've still got three rerolls job done yeah I think the um, safer moves out I mean it depends who you want to be leveling and who's scoring but uh, that yeah that white could have blitzed the awful way and then the ghoul's free to move um, but that got the job done that's two one. Five failed docket rolls. So the other thing, uh, the other thing I knew about this game, apart from the, um, the final score, was um, the undead team failed nine out of ten recover from knockout rolls. Uh, only one they've passed uh, was the mummy coming back uh, for the second half. And I knew because I watched, um, I, I watched up until the first touchdown live, uh, so I saw the mummy get knocked out and wondered if that had been out the whole game. But yeah, down to six players, the undead. Um, those. Five knocked out and two injuries. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Still eleven for the necromantic, a knockout and an injury. I think the injury was just a badly hurt as well on that uh, block zombie. So the undead don't need any more rerolls, they've got more than their returns left already. Uh, but nice deep kick um, means they're very unlikely to be conceding another one in two turns with uh, the ball that deep. Necrantic can um, can two turn quite quite well uh, if they can make a successful pass because the walls are definitely quick enough to get down there in two turns comfortably. on the mummy maybe not maybe this one is it's that way two dice into two gets a knockdown so this is a claw hit um, that doesn't break armor <laughs> try We've got the yeah so moving the catcher first means it's a shorter throw but we can get a throw with this ghoul that's a level there we go it does level up on six blitzing up into a one dice and have to show for it and one more necromantic turn A 30 point werewolf looking for a couple of points if it can uh, knock this mummy down. I hope so, it re rolls to get a push back. I think that's it. Oh no, we've got the other wolf who can go for it as well. So it's three, four, five. Now uh, we need one more assist. Yep, yeah, they're all there, would have done it. And that's two dice into two again for that wolf. And that wolf gets a knockdown. With no effects. Uh, oh, there's more. Are we going to see a, a mummy foul? Foul by on a mummy. Just a stun. Uh, looking to throw back for another point, but that pass was catch. Uh, catch was dropped. Uh, and yeah, there we have it. So that's two one. Um, yeah, much massively out blocking the by the um, by the necromantic. I think that's down to play, number of players on the pitch for most of it. The undead struggled to keep players on. Um, losing the mummy for much of the first half would have affected that as well. I think I mentioned um, in the first half that the flesh golems are doing a much better job at dominating the middle of the pitch than the mummies were. Um, but of course, there was only one mummy for a lot of it, um, and that was. I think that was quite telling, that extra bit of strength um, helped them to do that, get more two dice blocks down and, uh, and 
get more players off the pitch ultimately is uh, yeah eight removals to four um for only 13 more successful blocks um points all round for everyone so a couple of casualties and a touchdown in there for that white and then mvp zombie is uh, is always disappointing maybe unless it puts them up a level um but it's probably always better better people to get an mvp on nothing you can do about that though with the uh random nature of mvps in this version of the game uh what's this one this was the touchdown and throw mvp this oh i don't know i can't remember what all these were i guess that's the mvp which which wolf was it oh it's fenrir so this was oh so that's mvp mvp and casualty touchdown and casualty um, for those and yeah the um that was that was the key very key stat in this only nine percent recovery on a 50 50 roll um it's kind of horrible um yeah i don't know there's much else to see it's you know even spread of dice and stuff but it's it's where they land that counts um block dice too the dice are quite evenly coming through a bit more on a bit more on the skulls and the pals uh, but yeah, that's that's where we're up to. We've had um, so the coach of this team has had, has a broken computer, so we're delaying um, or extending uh, this match week by I think another week. Um, sounds like it's going to be enough to to get this match played. But we're so we're already doing two two week rounds. Um, it's going to be a three week round for this one, which is why I've got time to do an extra video. And we've seen all three of these matches so far. Um, let's look. Something we haven't done yet is uh, look at how the teams are going. Um, so this. Um, I think it was just the goal who levelled, um, rolled a double, and the coach coach came uh, uh, and asked in the chat what people thought. Um, yeah, so we don't know yet. I think um, a lot of people like guard on a goal. Um, I don't like guard on goals because it means they've got to be stuck in, and they're your most vulnerable players with no regeneration and only armor seven. Um, so I personally don't like that, but it's um, yeah, loads of people do, um, and is is a way to go. I like the idea of looking at passing skills if you get a double and a goal um it's your opportunity to build a, a thrower to give you another dimension to your play um but nerve steel is also uh, a great pick if you want a catcher um and which which goals can make good catchers then you kind of need a thrower to make the most of them so it's uh yeah it's whether you want to do that or not and but but having someone who can chuck the ball reliably gives you a, yeah, a whole new dimension to your team um this team so they played they played the uh the, yeah bretonians uh, lost two one i can't remember if we had much in the way of level ups can't see anything new there so mef had no one level uh Kemri haven't yet played my underworld team did have two yeah two players level my two touchdown scorers as well now have a wrestle lineman uh, and the blitzer with tackles taking the horns, so it gives me a strength four blitz every turn if, I, if I'm going to use that, um, which can be really helpful for sort of line breaking when you're playing strength three players. Um, you don't need an assist for him to get two dice uh, to find his way through. Um, which is why I went for that. It gives me uh, give me another option. Um, Lizard men have played. They played against me. I, did they have anyone level? They did because I had a Saurus get MVP in level. Um, it was one of these three with just block, and I don't think anyone else leveled. Did the Croxigore? Croxigore already had guard, I think, didn't it? I don't think it leveled in that game. Um, these Bretonians are the ones who've not played yet, so they're playing the Kemri. Um, Undead there, I don't think took any levels. Do have two players missing the next game. I don't think there's anything permanent, though. That's just missed next game. I'm pretty sure the goal was the same. Um, yeah, yeah, they're just just missing the next game. That drops their team value a bit and leaves them with 11 players. So they, well, we'll see who they've got next, but they'll have inducements to think about. Um, probably already would because they're one of the newer teams. They're, they're less experienced than the ones that played last season. Uh, and this Bretonian team who won against the Norse in the first game. Um, I don't, hmm, I don't know that there are any levels. There may have been actually. I, I'm not sure both of these blitzers had dodge, so that might be an extra one they've got, and maybe only one of these blockers had guard. I don't remember um, who might have leveled last game. 
No, there was a strike four lineman. There's a strike two lineman here um, who may not be around for long, but we'll see. Uh, and that's that's how where we all are. So look, quick look ahead at next week's games. So I have got I've got Norse next time. That didn't go well for me last time. Um, so we'll see if we can uh, improve on last season's game. Um, that's Necromantic against Kemri. Uh, Undead against Lizard Men. Uh, Oh, both Bretonian teams facing each other next week once we get to those. Quick look at what... Um, where are we? So 50... I was saying about 120 in inducements. I thought it might have been higher because I know this is one of the highest team value teams in the league. Uh, Lizard men have actually gone above them. Uh, but yeah, so I've got 120 to think about. Um, I think I might just be loading up on Bloodwiser kegs, um, which is something I could... Because I took Fez last time. I had a just under 100 spent and thought oh, Fez will be the best way to spend 100 um, but I think two Bloodwiser kegs would have been better I have a bit in 120 so I could take a wizard if I chip in 30 there um, something to think about but yeah we'll, we'll have a look at that uh, there'll be more games next week I don't think we'll get uh, we'll be able to I, I don't know if I'll get time to cover this one next week but we'll see how we go because there might not be any other matches um, so yeah if it's the only one only one a week, uh, I'll yeah try and get that one on. 